Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how Fluid Designer can create custom products that can be saved back to your library and then used in new or existing projects. The method that I'm going to be demonstrating is a quick way that you can snap together components to create custom frameless cabinets, full-length face frame, custom wardrobes, office furniture, and other custom commercial and residential casework. Now I'm going to start out by switching over to the starters category, and I'm going to drag this base starter into my scene here. Now this is just a simple cube that basically represents the volume of the product that we're going to be creating. And if we right click, we can access the properties so we can adjust the size if we want to here. And apart from that, we can also drop components into this volume. So if I switch over to my inserts category, here I'll go ahead and drag this base carcass and I'll drop it into that volume. And we can see that it takes on the overall size of our product. But we also have a volume within the opening of this insert that we can begin to drop things into. So if I switch over to my cabinet splitters, here I can drag one of these splitters into that opening and I can split that opening. So we can see that by default this splits it in half, but if we right click we can access the properties of the last component that we added. And so here with both of these options checked, that tells the component that they're always going to be equally spaced. But if we uncheck this one here and we set it to be let's say 18 inches, now this opening will always be 18 and this opening will take up the remaining space. Now there's no limit to how many times we can split this, so if we drag a horizontal splitter here, we can split this opening horizontally and we can right click and we can do the same thing. So let's go ahead and set this top opening to be 6 inches, we'll say OK, and that recalculates the openings. Now we can do this a couple more times, here we'll go ahead and take another vertical splitter and we'll split this top opening, and then we'll take this double splitter here and we'll split this bottom opening. Now if I leave these by default, if we right click, we can always set those openings to be equal. And here if I do control right click, I can access the main properties of my product. And if I adjust the size and click OK, we can see that all of those inserts automatically recalculate. So that works quite well. So next we can see as we've been splitting up this cabinet, we have a lot more openings that we can add components to. And so here if I switch over to, let's say, my cabinet door category, I'll go and just use a single door and I'll drop it in this first opening. And so that adds it to that opening and we can right click to access its properties. We can go to the door options, set it to be a left swing if we want to. We can go to the reveal options and we can set all of the reveals independently. So here I'm just going to go ahead and set the half overlay on the right because I'm going to be adding some more components to these openings. And I'll go ahead and close out of that and let's go and add some drawers. So I'll switch over to my cabinet drawers and let's go ahead and add in a single drawer to this top opening right here. We can right click and access the reveal options just like before. So we can go ahead and set this to be a left right half overlay and a half overlay on the bottom. Then we can drag in a drawer into this opening right here. We can right click and go to its reveal options. So let's go to a half overlay left and bottom. We can also set it to be inset if we want to just inset that drawer, but right now let's go and leave it as an overlay. We can also set some different options about the drawer box. Here we can turn on a lock if we want to. Let's go and just set a lock on this drawer and turn on a lock on this drawer. Okay. Now let's go ahead and maybe add in a three drawer bank into this center opening right here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll set its reveals to be a half overlay on the top left and right. We'll say okay and okay. All right, great. Now let's go ahead and just uh, switch over to the cabinet shelves. And let's go ahead and add in some base shelves into this opening right here and to this opening over here. Now we can add more components to one insert by just copying the formula. So here let's go ahead and switch over to the cabinet doors. And if we go to the drawer or the door, we can just drag it and select this shelf. And here we can just copy the formulas for that insert. So if we say copy, it will automatically place that in there. We can right click, go to the door options, set it to be a left swing. Go to the reveal option, set it to be half overlay, left, right, and top. And that adjusts everything like we would expect. And let's go and put one more door into this opening. So we'll go and copy that. And then go to its reveal options, set it to be half overlay on the left and half overlay on the top. Now at this point, we still have a fully parametric product. So if we control right click, we can access the properties about the product. And here we can adjust the size, click OK, and that will recalculate all of the openings. Here we can go and change the height as well. Say OK. And we can see that it maintains that 6 inch opening on the top and everything is working just like we would expect at that point. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to select this carcass. I'm going to turn on some finished ends for it. 
and that's looking pretty good. So now let's just go ahead and switch over to rendered mode. Maybe I'll add in just a quick sun lamp just to make a little bit more light in the scene. And let's go ahead and just see what we're looking at here for this product. So that's looking great so far. We can see that we just took a few minutes and created a fully parametric custom cabinet. Now the last thing that we want to do is just go ahead and save this back to the library. And so I'm going to switch back to material mode here. All we need to do is go to File and then Save As. I'll save it to my product library in the Frameless Cabinets directory. And here I'm just going to create a new folder and I'll call it Custom. And I'll select that. And here I'll just go ahead and call this Custom Cabinet. And then we'll save that directory. And now we can also create a custom thumbnail if we want to. All we need to do is just go to Render, Add Thumbnail Camera and Lighting. That positions that just like we would need to. And all we need to do is just click Render Scene. So that's created our thumbnail. And then we can just save that into the same directory. And we'll save that. And then we can go ahead and File, New Scene. We'll reload the startup file. Then I'm just going to switch over to the custom category that I created, and I'll drop in my custom cabinet. And now this will behave just like we would expect. If we right-click, we can adjust its size. It's still fully parametric. Here, if we, I'm going to add in a quick sun lamp and I'll go into rendered mode. And here, if I oops, select my cabinet and right-click, I can change and take full advantage of all the specification group features. So here, if we start adjusting which specification group we're using, we can see that we can switch out all the materials just like we would expect. So all that works really well. So that's all I really wanted to show in this video. But like I mentioned before, the same technique can be used to create all sorts of different types of custom cabinetry. But I'd like to thank everyone for watching and be on the lookout for more information on the Fluid Designer Project.